I just think, are you from here? Yes, I am. Okay, I just think that we all ought to have a little perspective on what's important in the world. And what's important in the world is what we're talking about. This is Baltimore Orioles chairman and CEO, John Angelos, who is about to invoke Martin Luther King Jr. in order to avoid answering questions. You're always going to have some controversy, but I've been very outspoken. I'm very transparent. In fact, in fact, I would invite you and all your colleagues next week, not on Martin Luther King Day. You can come back to this building. You can meet me in this office. I'll take you down on the third floor and I'll show you the financials of the Orioles. I'll show you the governance of the Orioles. I'll show you everything you want to know, and I'll put all your questions. But today, on MLK Day, I'm not answering any of those questions. Let's pause here. The context. Per The Athletic's Dan Connolly, who had a back and forth with Angelos, was about the family's future with the Baltimore Orioles. Connolly would then respond, and that's when it just completely gets off the rails. Okay, well, let me just respond very quickly and no, say No, no, I don't want you to respond. Well, I just, I'm well, not going to entertain those questions on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Which is the day that you set up for us to talk to you. This is the second time that we have spoken to you in four years. Let's openly. take another question. So Let's take and, another and, and let me Let's finish. take another question. Let me ask one more question here. No, I'm not going to let you ask any more questions because you're highly, it's highly inappropriate on the day on Martin set, Luther King Jr. Day. day. Angelos, who comes from a billionaire family, pivoted to MLK to deflect from answering reporters' questions. Connolly, a beat reporter would put in his column following this entire debacle. Monday was the first time John Angelos made himself available to local reporters since February 2022 on a Zoom. When the Paul McCartney concert at Camden Yards was announced before that, the last time Angelos spoke to the Baltimore media as a group was in January 2019 when he announced the Billy Joel concert at Camden Yards. Like many ultra wealthy people in this country, aside from, you know, buying lawmakers, which we have covered many times and Open Secrets is a great source that everyone should use. There have been disputes. His dad, Peter, is in failing health while also the majority owner of the team. John's younger brother, Lewis, was suing John and their mother, Georgia, over ownership of the team. Lewis has claimed that John could look to move the franchise to Tennessee and has alleged that John said he could do this without having to answer to anyone. So off the bat, when learning about this family, we need to understand the internal strife among siblings and also the city of Baltimore simply fearing that their beloved Orioles could depart which obviously crushes the soul of every sports fan. Louis also alleged that his mother has prioritized selling the team and would have done so in 2020, but for John, nixing the deal. At a Q&A, John reiterated that this would not be the case and has insisted that the O's will remain in town. Thus, like any good reporter, Connolly simply asked, with all due respect, I'm going to try not to talk too much between the lines today, Angelo said. I think Dr. King would approach that if we talked about what was going on in the community a little bit more. The Orioles are going to be here for the long term. We have been here. And I've said many times publicly, unsolicited, unprompted, we're never going anywhere. As seen in the clip, Angelos did not answer questions. He spoke down to the media. He spoke down to Dan Connolly. And to reiterate, he didn't answer a single question. All he did was instill more pessimism in the fan base of the Orioles. Because when someone does this and holds court, and then when being asked not even a difficult question, more so clarity, Seeking clarification on behalf of the fan base and also reporters and journalists who are seeking answers to go then and pivot to this is completely unacceptable. And I understand why O's fans have simply lost faith. Connolly would then quote John as follows. I think that your focus is completely out of touch and has no perspective whatsoever on what real world people face. Yes, John. 
the privileged son of an undeniably hardworking billionaire called me, Dan, the writer, out of touch about what real world people face. It was also John who turned the attention of the day away from the nonprofit foundation by going on his rant when a simple, I'll answer these questions after the official conference would have sufficed. We're not media savages. What tickles our fancy, though, is Angelo saying he has been very transparent and even made an offer to show journalists and reporters the Orioles' books. However, the truth is, John never had a real interest in answering questions or interest in anyone who may question him at all. Throughout his tenure, he has ignored most interview requests. He almost never makes himself available except for the rare TV or radio interview on his terms. And yet, we are left with this. The question still looms. And it is a dark cloud over this entire media session. Which is, how does the internal power struggle in the family impact the O's? Does the family plan to keep the team after potentially their father unfortunately passes away? Why has a new lease not been signed? And what does the team plan to do with the $600 million set aside by the state for upgrades to Camden Yards? Lastly, as I opened up this piece, to... Invoke Dr. Martin Luther King in order to avoid questions or criticism, because that's basically what he was doing. He said, now is not the time for this. Well, when is the time? If you do not go in front of the media, if you go in front of the media twice in the span of three years, when is the time? Also, it's not on your terms. If you have an open Q&A media session where you invite the media to said Q&A session. The reasoning is beyond stupid, if, if I'm being rather blunt on this subject. And to go and say, MLK wouldn't like that. Screw you. I don't think you know. Just, he could say whatever he likes, okay? This is not a... Oh, well, freedom of speech. Freedom. That doesn't matter. The point of contention is he's never around. The team is in flux. They have a ton of cash that they're not using to upgrade the ballpark. And there is potentially the threat of moving, which he will not answer, which is an answer, by the way. So, I ask you, what do you think? Comment below. Let's talk it out.